who led thousands of Catholics on Long Island for more than two decades is dead tonight. Also ahead, the World Economic Forum is coming. Police are already sealing off city streets. We'll tell you what areas to avoid. And will Mike Tyson be able to fight in Vegas? The verdict is in. Nightcast right now. You're watching Nightcast, part of the CBS2 Information Network. Good evening, I'm Angela Ray. And I'm Bernie Anastas. If you're coming into Manhattan tomorrow, well, be warned. Streets and sidewalks are being shut down for the World Economic Summit. And Nightcast report of Vince Dementri is live on the east side with the information that you need to know. Vince. In a little less than six hours, those frozen zones in and around Waldorf Astoria go into effect. Then come on Thursday, the World Economic Forum begins. And as the world watches, the question tonight is, can thousands of cops and thousands of protesters coexist for four days without any ugliness? Do we have a right to be out there? Yeah! In a small cubby hole inside a building on West 14th Street, the group called International Answer is gearing up to protest the World Economic Forum. As they ready their signs of dismay, their spokesman is trying to deflect the subject of potential violence, the type we've seen at other economic rallies overseas and this one in Seattle a few years ago. The protest is going to take place. It's going to be orderly. It's not going to be the problem. And if the police do not attack, do not arrest without cause, then everything will be all right, and it'll be a healthy, wonderful, invigorating experience for New York. The NYPD says they would like nothing better, but just in case, barriers are up, manhole covers are sealed around the wall of Astoria, which is the headquarters for the WEF. Thousands of cops have their marching orders when it comes to these protesters. Zero tolerance, period. And for the duration of this event, 7,600 cops will be working 24 hours a day. Now, just in case that you're worried that terrorists might use this event as an opportunity to slip into the city unnoticed and wreak havoc, police officers are telling me tonight that you should not worry. They are prepared for that contingency. In fact, they tell me that the entire city, including all the tunnels, the bridges, even the subway system, is on its highest state of alert for the entire four-day event. Live on the east side. I've been Stementry, CBS 2 Nightcast. Ernie, back okay, to you. Okay, thank you, Vince. A six-year-old boy is in critical condition tonight after being hit by a livery cab in Washington Heights. The accident happened at West 179th Street and Audubon Avenue. Police say that the boy ran into the street from between two parked cars when he was hit. The child was taken to Columbia Presbyterian Hospital. The driver is not expected to be charged. Angela. A survivor of the World Trade Center attacks is out of the hospital tonight. Elaine Duke was on the 88th floor of Tower One. When the first plane hit, she was engulfed in flames. Other workers helped her out of the building. Elaine was burned over 77% of her body and was immediately given last rites. But Duke says she asked God to save her, and he did. Now she's moving to a rehab center in White Plains. I'm all set for that. Good. You have to spend it all the time in the hospital. I'm ready to move on. Great. I want to get back to the way I was. What a winner. Duke says when she's well enough, she wants to go to Atlantic City. A truck driver is hospitalized tonight after a fiery crash. It happened in Nyack. Police say that the driver lost control of his moving van and rammed into several parked cars on Main Street. The van then crashed into two buildings, hitting several gas lines, sparking a huge fire. The driver is in serious condition tonight. No one else was hurt. Tonight, President Bush addressed a nation at war and said the state of our union has never been stronger. Nightcast reporter Kirsten Cole is live in Washington, D.C. and has more on tonight's address. Kirsten. Angela, Bush is riding high on his 80% approval rating. He is using the war on terror as the mission to define his presidency, and he outlined the dangers to Americans tonight, saying there are still more than a dozen terror camps running and tens of thousands of terrorists still at large. In his first State of the Union address since being elected president, George W. Bush delivered by going after terrorists and putting three countries in the crosshairs. North Korea is a regime arming with missiles and weapons of mass destruction. Iran aggressively pursues these weapons and exports terror. The Iraqi regime has plotted to develop anthrax and nerve gas and nuclear weapons for over a decade. Homeland Security is being constantly tested, and the $38 billion Bush is asking for will provide security in... Bioterrorism, emergency response, airport and border security, 
But the strongest support and applause came as the president outlined his economic security plan in one word. Jobs. Tax cuts, extended unemployment benefits, and improved health insurance would be funded from a budget deficit. Our budget will run a deficit that will be small and short-term so long as Congress restrains spending and acts in a fiscally responsible manner. Congressman Dick Gephardt responded for the Democrats, most notably taking issue with spending and tax cuts. Creating a government here at home that lives within its means, cuts wasteful spending, and invests in the future. And Congressman Gephardt was the only one to mention the Enron word, using it in the context that employees should be protected from companies like the energy giant. There was no mention of the $20 billion in economic aid that New York is expecting in the speech. However, I spoke with Senator Schumer earlier in the day, and he said he had personal assurances from the president that that aid to help cover the September 11th tragedy would be forthcoming. Live on Capitol Hill, I'm Kirsten Cole, CBS2 Nightcast. Back to you, Angela. Kirsten, thank you. And tomorrow, Right here in New York City, Mayor Michael Bloomberg will deliver his State of the City address. We'll have the highlights tomorrow on CBS 2 beginning at 4.30. Ernie? President Bush's anti-terrorism message to the nation tonight also resonates in Israel, which has been battling terrorism for decades. Nightcast reporter Lou Young is on assignment in Israel. He joins us live right now from Tel Aviv. Lou? Good evening, Ernie. While the uh, president prepares us for a wider war on terrorism, we thought we'd take you to a place where terrorists come from, uh, at least a local variety who use terror as a weapon of uh, national aspiration for the Palestinians against Israel. Uh, it is the most crowded piece of real estate on the planet, an open-air prison called Gaza. The Gaza Strip is a cauldron of discontent, a sprawling collection of densely populated towns and refugee camps penned in against the sea. One and a half million people live along its 30-mile length, bordered by Israel on three sides. This is the place Yasser Arafat wants to return to, but cannot, while the Israelis have him boxed in on the West Bank. His soldiers, many of whom haven't been paid for weeks, are reduced to scavenging spare parts off the light-armored vehicles Israel destroys from the sky. Their hulks discard in a wind-blown lot still covered with debris from the buildings that fell around them. Rafa is the end of the line in Gaza. The flags you're looking at are Egyptian flags. That's the Egyptian border with Gaza. This part of Gaza used to be Egypt, right here, but it fell to Israeli forces in 1967. When Israel made its peace with Anwar Sadat, he didn't want this place back because it was filled with Palestinians. So they are truly the unwanted, and they know it. Their heroes are considered terrorists on the outside. Early this month, the Israelis bulldozed dozens of homes to clear the area near the border to keep them in. The people who used to live in those homes now live in tents. Defeated, they refuse to surrender terror as a weapon, insisting it's all they have. We are in a bigger prison. We must have our, have our rights. We want to be like all the world. So what do you think of a person who blows himself up in Israel? Is is he a hero or a terrorist? No, he is not a terrorist. No? He's not a terrorist. Well, the same, well, the same voices that will uh, say those words will uh, condemn terrorism elsewhere, if refusing to, uh, uh, to, uh, to acknowledge the link. Uh, and as for the Israelis, uh, when they tighten the screws in their own defense, they seem to only uh, deepen the bitterness on the other side of the wire. Uh, Israeli troops were in Gaza again last night looking for suspects, terror suspects. There was exchanges of gunfire. There were exchanges of mortar fire. And tomorrow, the Israeli defense minister will meet with Egyptian President uh, Mubarak to discuss their mutual security issues, which which is another word for the Palestinians, especially those living in Gaza. We're live tonight in Tel Aviv, Israel. Lou Young, CBS2 Nightcast. Ernie, Angela, back to you. Lou, thank you. Coming up a little bit later, we're going to tell you exactly what streets to avoid tomorrow morning when we check out tomorrow's traffic. Also ahead, thousands of Catholics on Long Island during morning tonight after losing the men who led them in prayer for nearly a quarter century. And boxing officials in Las Vegas rule on the Mike Tyson case. We'll tell you when and if he'll hit the ring. Okay, David Rogers, is this the end of our springtime and winter? You better believe it. Record high temperatures today, but it looks like wintry weather makes a return to the tri-state area. We'll have your team forecast. This is your CBS2 Information Network. News on CBS2 is brought to you by BMW, the ultimate driving machine. Federal law requires all advertisers to provide reasonable support for advertising claims before they are made.
that reasonable enough? BMW, the ultimate driving machine. Drive one at your local BMW center. For these American prisoners, the war seemed all but over. I'm forced to remind you, it's came. It's not a sport. But they lived by one rule. You know where those Russians go? Munitions plant. I need to take out that target. Never stop fighting. How do you choose who goes out and who'd stay back to catch the Helford? As long as my son knows, everything's okay. Bruce Willis. Let's go! Hearts War. Rated R. Starts Friday, February 15th at theaters everywhere. You know who lives here? Cinderella. I'm pretty sure she has her own room. That's Walt, way before your time. And Mickey's here somewhere, not the one you haul around at home, the real guy. Now I'll be Jasmine and you be Aladdin. Come share the excitement at our year-long celebration of Walt Disney's 100th birthday. Boy, if it wasn't for me, you'd miss everything. We share a dream come true. Make plans at DisneyWorld.com. Tonight, the Roman Catholic community on Long Island is in mourning. The man who was their spiritual leader for nearly 25 years has died. CBS 2's Whitney Casey has more now on the life of Bishop John McGann. I serve the Lord with gladness, and that was, that was really his life. He, he wanted us uh, really to serve the Lord with, with a great deal of gladness and, and, and happiness. Bishop John McGann's coat of arms. It hangs proudly tonight in St. Agnes Cathedral, and longtime friend Father Brian Brinker lights the Paschal candle in his remembrance. He was just a delight to be around. He never was like a bishop. He was like a parish priest. Um, he, had a, he told a lot of stories. The Brooklyn-born bishops remembered in spirit and in service. He practiced in the Catholic community in many roles for more than 50 years. Ordained when he was just 26, he was the second bishop of the Diocese of Rockville Center, appointed in 1976. As bishop, he oversaw 143 parishes between Suffolk and Nassau counties, several thousand parishioners. Friends of the bishop say that he was anemic and had begun to experience many health difficulties because of his anemia. He died today at age 77, and his funeral services will be held here at St. Agnes Cathedral Monday, February 4th at 2 p.m. Reporting from Rockville Center, Whitney Casey, CBS2 Nightcast. And there's more news still ahead tonight. The sidewalks in one New Jersey town will soon roll up before midnight. It's all part of a plan to wipe out crime, and we'll tell you where. And will this record-setting weather last much longer? Your double-team forecast is coming up. Closed captioning on CBS2 is brought to you by the amazing Toyota Camry. Get the feeling. Toyota. I'm Jason Seahorn. This is my home. If I make smart moves here, my dreams can come true. This is my new home. YHG Foxens made this dream come true when they sold my house and saved me thousands of dollars. YHD Foxtons, first in New Jersey, now in New York. Saving homeowners millions with our 2% commissions. Dial 1-800-CALL-YHD. 2% real estate commissions. Now that's smart. Real estate smart. Give us a call. What the world needs now is love, sweet love. Sweet, sweet love. It's the only thing that there's just too little love. And the resorts made for love are sandals. Ten Caribbean hideaways for couples voted the world's best, where everything's included, so all you need is love. Love, sweet love for love. Book now, save 30%. Call your travel agent or 1-800-SANDALS. At Mount Sinai, extraordinary minds, the best in medicine, setting new standards every day. Extraordinary teams, combining the latest science with the deepest commitment to patient care. Extraordinary leadership in cardiac care, minimally invasive surgery, and organ transplantation, bringing new possibilities to life. Mount Sinai, extraordinary people, extraordinary medicine. 
U.S. computers to Syria, aerospace parts to Iran, sensitive high-tech products from American companies, Libya, Russia, United being United sold United illegally United. to America's enemies, the Sudan, Iraq, Syria, Thursday at 11 on CBS2, they're companies you may be supporting, and they could be placing our nation at risk, putting profits ahead of patriotism while trading with the enemy. CBS2 investigates Thursday at 11 on Nightcast, part of the CBS2 Information Network. The mayor of Jersey City wants to see the city shut down at 11 o'clock sharp. Now, the reason for that, to cut crime. Nightcast reporter Amy Nuzzo joins us live now with that story. Good evening, Amy. Good evening. Well, long after 11 p.m., the streets of downtown Jersey City will be bustling with activity. People hanging out and, in some cases, buying and selling drugs. The city's mayor says late-night businesses draw that criminal element like moths to a flame. There's no need to have, have um, stores servicing these people who have nothing to do at 2 in the morning except to sell drugs. Mayor Glenn Cunningham says he'll introduce to city council a citywide 11 p.m. business curfew as part of a crackdown on drug crime. Cunningham helped pass a similar ordinance as city council president more than a decade ago, but it was recently overturned by a judge who ruled it was discriminatory because it only applied to certain predominantly black neighborhoods. Cunningham's revised plan would impact businesses throughout the city, including Crown Fried Chicken. The people like it, you know, everybody like it, stay to, to 5 o'clock, you know, to 3 o'clock. It's convenient for me. They stay open all night. If I'm home and I, and I need to get something to eat, I just come down here. But several residents we talked to along Martin Luther King Drive told us the curfew is necessary. They need to be closed. It promotes loitering, which is going to bring more crime. And in this area, downtown Jersey City, the crime is sky high. The, the living conditions are here getting horrendous. Now, bars would not be affected by the proposed curfew, and there's plenty of room for exceptions. Businesses would be able to seek a waiver from police to stay open past 11 p.m. Reporting live from Jersey City, Amy Nuzo, CBS2 Nightcast. Back to you, Angela. Amy, thank you. New Jersey is getting tough on terrorism, starting with a new training course for its police officers. First up, teaching officers how to work together and share information in the fight against terrorism. Police from Bergen, Passaic, Hudson, and Essex counties will be the first to be trained at the Bergen County Law and Public Safety Institute. This is a partnership. This is an effort to bring the municipal police officers online by giving them certain skills that uh, may be the early part of a detection system of any future terrorist incidents. Officers will also be trained in intelligence gathering, international, domestic, and cyber terrorism, money laundering, and bias crimes. And we go on to the weather. Angela, the weather is so nice. It was so nice. No coat today, but tomorrow's going to be a horse of a different color. Well, you know what? People were actually eating outside yeah. at sidewalk cafes today, yeah. like it was summertime. But what about tomorrow, David? Well, we're going to see some changes and get back to the business of reality across the tri-state area. Although a lot of people like the mild temperatures, a lot of folks also like that chill in the air. No chill in the air tonight. Here's a look at the scene right around Lincoln. Uh, center and a pretty good looking uh, forecast throughout most of the tri-state area. 61, that's a big number right now at Central Park. Under mostly cloudy sky, winds out of the southwest at 13, gusting up to 19 miles per hour, humidity at 72%, and we currently have a falling barometer around the five boroughs. Look at those numbers. Westerly 58, Ozone Park has a current temperature of 63 degrees, a little cooler to the east, Greenwich at 49, Belmore at 49, and Rockaway's current temperature is at 48. 69 was our high temperature today, topping an old record of 55. Morning low 50 degrees, no precip, sunset 510, rises tomorrow morning at 708. All right, we're still pretty mild, but look off to the west as that cold air now moving across a large part of the northern plains. Billings, 13, Minneapolis, 21, Chicago's at 36 degrees. We're not going to get quite this cold, but we are going to see this colder air starting to filter in over the next uh, 24 to 36 hours. And as that moisture runs into the colder air, getting a little mix off to the west, most areas to the east picking up some real light shower activity. It looks like we're going to be in that sector over the next 24 to 36 hours as a cold front drops to our south. Areas to the north and west early Thursday morning and Friday morning have the potential of seeing rain, sleet, and some snow. We'll continue to watch that system as that colder air starts to filter in. Let's head back over to Janine and get a look at today's record high temperatures and how it's going to stack up to conditions tomorrow.
Oh, night and day. It's all going to be different tomorrow, David. We had a lot of record highs today, including in Trenton, Newark, Bridgeport, and also New York City. You can see the numbers are quite different, though, when you head to Bridgeport. Your record high today was 59. The record high, though, in Trenton, 70 degrees. A little bit cooler in Bridgeport and also south-facing shores of Long Island, where you had the sea breeze today that definitely impacted you. Tomorrow, it's going to be a big difference. In Newark, you'll be 20 degrees colder, as the high will only be 48, and it will be raining. So we're looking for drizzly, wet weather weather with temperatures only in the 40s across coastal Connecticut from Bridgeport to New Haven. New York City, instead of a high of 69 near 70, you are going to be also in the middle 40s. And it's going to be breezy and it's going to be wet. So it will be a big difference tomorrow, David. All right, Janine, thanks a lot for that report. And again, colder temperatures, that's going to be on tap over the next couple of days. Here's your forecast in detail. Rest of the night tonight, mostly cloudy sky. Any showers should hold off until the pre-dawn hours. Temperature-wise, still pretty mild. Marstown, 43 in the city, about 53 degrees. Hey, kids, on the bus stop tomorrow, if you're a student at Washington, number one out there in Harrison, New Jersey, light rain and breezy. Winds out of the southwest, 10 to 15. Temperatures, 43 to 47. There's your five-day forecast. Again, northwestern areas. Look for a combination of uh, rain, sleet, and and snow early Thursday morning and early Friday morning, drying out 41 degrees and the weekend pretty seasonable, partly sunny sky and temperatures in the middle to upper 30s. That's your forecast for now. Have a great and safe day tomorrow. Ernie Angela, back to you. David, thank you. And a major milestone today for New York's bravest. We've got that story. But first, Brett Haber's on tap with some news. I think we all knew bad news for Mike Tyson. You know, I was thinking when the people in Las Vegas tell you you're of low moral character, <laughs> you, you've really crossed the uh, social abyss and uh, Mike Tyson has worn out his welcome in the state where everybody is welcome. We'll tell you what today's decision means for Tyson's future, plus the Knicks and Sixers in Nightcast Sports next. First, here's a look at the streets that will be closed tomorrow to control the crowds for the World Economic Forum. Today and over 100 critics agree, Amelie is one of the year's best pictures. And now it's the winner of four European Film Awards, including Best Picture of the Year. Believe in the magic of Amelie. Rated R now playing. Oldies equals WCBS FM 101.1. CBS FM 101.1, the station you sing along to. There she was, just a walking down the street singing. Do I did it done? Come on, you know the words. Saturday. The greatest hits of all time. CBS FM 101.1. The more you live, the more you love, the more you laugh. The more a bladder control issue shouldn't hold you back. Discover new Serenity Slender. A breakthrough creates three layers of protection. The core of super absorbers keeps you drier in our thinnest design ever. Even the leading maxi doesn't come close to letting you feel this free. New Serenity Slender. More protection, less pad. Now that's more you. Gotta make it better. Oh. Hey! How does Sam Breakstone make his cottage doubles even better? Berries! That's it! Introducing two Breakstone's cottage doubles, blueberry and raspberry. I'm a genius! I'm John Ravitz. I want to be your state senator because we have a lot of work to do. To restore our economy and bring back good jobs. To make our schools better with high standards and safe classrooms. To protect our quality of life. To support the men and women who risk and give their lives to protect ours. To unify our city, because nobody's stronger than New Yorkers when we come together. I'm John Rabbits. I'm ready to do my part. Let's get going. And now, Mike Cass Sports with Fred Haber. Well, here's hoping you enjoyed the Mike Tyson melee over at the Hudson Theater last week, because it may be the last time anybody sees Tyson fight in this country ever. The Nevada Boxing Commission ruled on Tyson's license application today, and in a word, their answer was 
No, the five-member commission cited the fact that last week's rhubarb seen here was simply the latest in a series of misbehavior by Tyson, and they fear he can't control himself. Tyson said this. I'm not Mother Teresa, and I'm not um, Charles Manson either, but um, just treat me equal. You know, I, mean, I don't care if you guys ban me for life, but just um, ban somebody else that does the same thing. Now, Tyson could apply to another state for a license, but they are likely to reject as well. The fight still could take place overseas. Well, any 12-step instructor will tell you you cannot start recovery until you hit rock bottom, and here's hoping the Knicks' 43-point home loss to the Hornets on Monday was rock bottom. The Knicks have won three straight since, however, that debacle, trying to make it four tonight against the Sixers, and you get the feeling the Knicks have turned the corner when they start hitting shots like, yeah, that. Mark Jackson from half court, you know he's at the restaurant right now telling people that's in my range you know. 11 points nine dimes for Jackson great game off the bench from Charlie Ward baseline for the reverse here he had 11 in the fourth quarter alone and two more of them right here off the steal by Camby he outlets to Ward Knicks held Iverson to 15 and scoreless in the fourth Knicks win it by seven meanwhile the NBA avoided a would-be tragic injustice today as they correctly named Nets point guard Jason Kidd to the all-star team Kidd who by the way could wind up winning the league's MVP this year, averaging 10 assists per game, and has led the Nets, of course, from worst to first in the East. Now, seeing as how two days ago Kevin Constantine was managing a junior hockey team in Pittsburgh, I think it's fair to assume his palms were a bit moist tonight as he tied the old necktie. Constantine made his debut behind the Devils bench tonight, replacing a man who took them to the Cup Finals twice. Short trip to the island for his Devils debut, and this is what he's hoping to see more of. Eliash to Arnott, and the Devils' A-line gets a goal. They lead it 1-0 there. Then in the second, I, I sense a flaw in the Islanders' defensive scheme here. Look at Bobby Holik. He's wide open, buries the backhand, and uh, Constantine a winner in his Devils' debut, 3-1. to one. College Hoops tonight, Big East Border War, St. John's, Seton Hall. We are in overtime. Seton Hall down two. But look at Ty Shine cutting through pretty much everybody in the building. Hoop in the harm. Pirates ice it with some free throws. They beat St. John's by two. Red Storm now 13 and 7. Now, Bill Belichick has said he will not answer the question till Wednesday, but that does not mean we're going to stop asking. That's just how us media folks are. And so at Super Bowl Media Day today, there was Drew Bledsoe at one podium, and there was Tom Brady at another, neither knowing who would start the Super Bowl. Here are their thoughts on the topic. I want to play. I want to play as bad as I wanted, never wanted anything. I mean, if, uh, this is a Super Bowl, and this is what you play for. So obviously, I would love to be in, the, in there. I'd love to be playing the, in this game. You know, I don't anticipate not playing, so I'll say that. You know, I anticipate playing, so, you know, the hypothetical of not playing really doesn't come into my mind. I think I feel good today, and I anticipate feeling a lot better on Sunday. Two great quarterbacks. It's a dilemma, but I suppose it's a, it's a good dilemma to have. Sure is. We're waiting for the game and halftime. Yeah, we, we love, we love <laughs> halftime. That's right. Thank you Thanks very much, Fred. Well, a major barrier is broken tonight by the New York City Fire Department. That story next on Nightcast. How does Geico process my claim so quickly and still save me so much money? Ancient martial arts secrets from the Wusha. As always, 15 minutes could save you 15% or more on car insurance. The Maximilian Designer for Sale at Bloomingdale's. Take an extra 25% off already reduced prices on furs from your favorite designers. Michael Kors, Anne Klein, Zuki, Louis Ferro, Vera Wang, Carolina Herrera, Zandra Rhodes, Maximilian Altamoda, and so many more. Take an extra 25% off for a total savings of 45 to 60%. The designer fur sale in the Maximilian Fur Salon at Bloomingdale's. At Mickey D's, the smiles are bigger than ever. Here's why. Right now at McDonald's, get a tender, delicious chicken fajita for just a dollar. Or how about our tasty, one-of-a-kind McChicken sandwich? It's also just a dollar. They're both on our Mickey D's dollar menu. A chicken fajita, a McChicken sandwich, and lots more. All just a dollar each. Every day on the Mickey D's dollar menu. So come on in. We're all waiting for you. We love to see you smile. This 
this winter, no matter what you may come across, with Jeep Grand Cherokee's 4-liter Powertech engine and legendary 4-wheel drive, you'll be sure to find a way to get over it. Qualified returning Daimler Chrysler lessees can lease a Laredo for zero down, $369 a month, and $1069 due at signing. Over 140 critics agree. In the Bedroom is one of the year's best pictures. The New York Times, the Wall Street Journal, and the Los Angeles film critics all say it's the best film of the year. Winner, Best Director, Todd Field, and Best Screenplay. Winner, Best Actress, Sissy Spacek. Winner, Best Actor, Tom Wilkinson. Winner, Best Supporting Actress, Marissa Tomei. Yeah! Rex Reed of the New York Observer says In the Bedroom is the single most powerful motion picture of 2001. In the Bedroom, rated R, now playing everywhere. A historic first for the New York City Fire Department. Today, the first African-American female firefighter was promoted to lieutenant. Meet Ella McNair. She was the only African-American woman elevated to lieutenant today, bringing the total number of female lieutenants in the fire department to three. McNair works at Engine Company 283 in Brownsville, and she says she's proud of her 20 years of service and her promotion. Oh, years of studying, years of hard work and dedication to arriving at this point, and it's finally here, and I'm, I'm glad. I'm happy. And congratulations. Lieutenant McNair says that she hopes that her promotion paves the way for more diversity in the ranks of the fire department. Well, your traffic and weather together is next. Stay with Nightcast. We'll be right back. People voted John Edward one of the 25 most intriguing people. Oh, my God. The Post says Edward gives his fans hope, crossing over weekdays at 3. Then at 4, it's the weakest link. Bingo! The Daily News calls it a more playful link. Weekdays on CBS 2. The new 255 horsepower Infiniti i35 with the most powerful engine in its class. Don't blink. More power. More grace. More eye. The new i35 from Infinity. This is the TD Waterhouse investment site. A crystal ball, it isn't. But the research and information you find here will help you make an investment decision you could be confident in. You want a fortune teller? Go to the circus. You want information you can trust? TD Waterhouse. Open an account today and receive Standard & Poor's Top 10 Picks for 2002. TD Waterhouse, you're in control. This is my killer DVD system. This is my killer DVD rental section. You have the hardware? Blockbuster has the software. This week at Blockbuster, you'll find all the hottest new movies, and they're guaranteed to be there, even on DVD. Choose from great titles like American Pie 2, The Fast and the Furious, and Moulin Rouge. All the biggest movies, and you can find them at Blockbuster, guaranteed. Blockbuster, bringing entertainment home. CBS 2, first news at 4.30. We want to bring you up to date. First with breaking news. First with weather. First with every local story that matters. Important warning for parents now. Weekday afternoons on the CBS 2 Information Network. Time for a quick look at your morning traffic and weather. And let's start with the traffic and CBS 2's Heather O'Rourke. Mass transit is definitely the way to go tomorrow through Monday. Avoid the east side of Manhattan between 59th Street and 47th Street between the FDR Drive and 5th Avenues because of the World Economic Forum. Expect closures, detours, and frozen zones. Now, security will be tighter around Manhattan. Expect extra delays at all crossings south of 63rd Street with the single occupancy vehicle restrictions in effect between 6 a.m. and 10 a.m. Heather O'Rourke, CBS2 Nightcast. Thank you, Heather. 
one more check on the weather, David. Yeah, you know, we, it was nice while it lasted. Now it's time to get back to uh, more reality type temperatures. Let's take a look at your CBS 2 24 hour forecast for tomorrow morning. Cloudy sky, scattered showers right around 53 degrees. You can see how the numbers start to drop throughout the day. Scattered showers midday, 50 degrees for the evening rush. More scattered showers, temperatures right around 46. For complete weather information around the clock, you can always check out our website, cbsnewyork.com. And we need the rain. Yes. Thank you, David. Thanks. Well, that's Nightcast. We're back again at 5 a.m. with the news this morning on CBS 2. And remember to set your car radio to WCBS 880 for nonstop news, traffic, and weather. I'm Ernie Anastas. I'm Angela Ray. David Letterman's up next tonight. He's chatting with Bruce Willis. Have a good night. See you tomorrow. Find out why.